Please. Either way, you decide. Please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Let, let me quickly <laughs> compliment what uh, my brother, President Mark Saras, just said, but in a different way. I think even through a partnership like this one, provided by the, the opportunity of this summit, Africa needs, we need to continue building our capacities and strengthening our institutions to enable us avoid over dependency that has been there for too long. But we have to avoid that by building capacities and cooperation and integration, people working together, so that we are able to own up to our mistakes, to our weaknesses, and own up to our solutions and contributing to our solutions. So that we, we can even tell our story. You know, we may, you, you find we even depend on others to tell our story. So that's how distortion has come about. So I, I really think we, th there is not much time to waste the, the, as time goes with Africa in terms of building this consensus, this working together, this owning up so that we cooperate and partner with others rather than being too dependent on them. So this is an opportunity we have in front of us to leverage this partnership and address that particular problem. Yes, thank you very much indeed. Uh, <clears throat> no, no, firstly, I would like to agree with my brothers that uh, let us take Ebola as <clears throat> a, a disease that is affecting humanity, <clears throat> rather than just to look at it as an African problem. Fortunately, I said earlier, Africa is organizing itself. Even the health organizations continentally are working together. That's why we're confident that this time around, we are working together to address this problem of Ebola. <clears throat> but I must also say, there is an unfortunate thing that Africa is reported in a particular way, at times out of perceptions. Even countries that are fighting corruption, the very fact that they are fighting corruption is a story that there are more corruptions in those countries. That's a problem you have. <clears throat> um, Africa, as, as, as of now, is organized better. We discuss many of these issues together in the AU in a manner that is far better than 20 years ago. We share everything together. We take common resolutions where we say, let us deal with these challenges that face us today. Earlier I mentioned, for an example, the infrastructure that we are together agreeing. There's no debate about it. It's a question of dealing with it and ensuring that Africa operates better. There are things that are not reported about the continent. There is an instrument, for an example, that we have, peer review mechanism. Nobody is talking about it globally. It's a unique instrument where <clears throat> countries in the continent subject themselves to their peers to review them, look at them. <clears throat> they first submit reports and it is discussed in the AU forums to, 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 to criticize if there are things to be criticized in the manner in which countries are being run. And there, there isn't such an instrument that I've seen globally. It's only found in Africa. Nobody reports about it. Should that be the problem of the continent? <clears throat> I think it is important for people to look at Africa and see that Africa is changing. There is a good story that is coming out of the continent of Africa in terms of working together, in terms of understanding our problems, in, 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 in a point of owning up to what in the past could have been mistakes. Today, I think 
we stand a better chance as the countries in the continent to better ourselves. That is why we appreciate this <clears throat> opportunity because we are then in a position to tell our own story rather than people telling the story on it, our it, behalf. It, it, exactly. Yeah, sure. Yesterday, I, I spoke at the, I think the National Press Club. There was an event I was invited. One of the things I said is that the Africa of today is not the Africa of yesterday or the day before yesterday. Africa has changed. The African economy is, there is, are performing better today. Six of the 10 fastest growing economies are in Africa. The period between 2011 and 2015, it is projected that seven out of the 10 fastest growing economies will be in Africa. But why are we there? Because of strong of pursuit of sound economic policies. Also, the pursuit of sound political policies. There is, democracy has taken root. Governance is, is enshrined. There is stronger commitment now to fight vices in society, corruption, drug trafficking, drug abuse, whatever. There is more respect for human rights. There are fewer conflicts on the continent today. When I say this, it does not mean that, except of course there are, there are a few hot spots. When you, when you look today what is happening, the, the conflict areas in Africa, they don't compare what the situation was. So I said, unfortunately, this is the good story which is not being told. So I was appealing to those journalists, please, tell the other, the other story. But I was giving the same example. Now there is Ebola. So the whole of African continent is being perceived as if everywhere, everybody is suffering from Ebola. I don't think that's true. Uh, <laughs> that's not true, uh, I don't think. I think there is some concern about- No, 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 I, 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 I'm not saying that, the, but, but this is the perception that, <coughs> You, yeah. If there is a problem, then it's, so I, I really don't know. When, when, when is, is Africa going to, to get out of this, of being perceived, if there is a problem in one country? I said Africa is a continent. There are 54 countries. They are different in terms of culture, in terms of, of particular situations. So until we get to a situation where Africa will be seen in the 54 countries that exist, we'll not get out of this. All right, I have one final question. They say, please go to the final question, and, and we are out of time and over time, but you raised the question of security. I mean, there is some concern about security. Uh, we do read about highly publicized stories, Boko Haram and 200 children. Uh, we know about uh, sometimes the absence of respect for boundaries. I mean, what do any of you want to say about security in Africa today as part of the message you want to convey to this audience here? Anyone? Okay. Africa is more secure today than, 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 than it was many years ago. If I may mention the, the problem areas, you have Somalia, which used to have a huge conflict, now the situation is much better. But Al-Shabaab has not been eliminated, so from time to time, these are strugglers. From time to time, they, 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 they would bomb this, ignite a bomb there. We have had a problem in, in, uh, in the full. The situation is much more under control now than, than it was in, in the past. But the problem in Eastern DRC, the situation is, is, is much better now than, than, than what it was in the past. Which other, which other conflict area? Anyone else? Yeah. They're finished. <laughs>
we, 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 still have, we, we still have huge problems in, uh, yeah, in, in probably Central Libya. Africa. <laughs> we, no, no, I'm sorry. We, we still have huge problems in Central Africa. We still have a huge problem in uh, Sudan, you know, where yeah, people are, are starving. There is this terrible situation in Sudan. We have a terrible situation also uh, in the northern part of Mali. Uh, uh, Africa, of course, it's much more sure, uh, secure than before, but we, st we are still uh, mm -hmm. facing a uh, challenge, an important challenge in matter of security, and we have to work together as African. You know, this is what we are trying to do uh, with Libya, about the problems of Libya, you know, about all the uh, countries around Libya to, to secure this country together. We have to face the problems, and we have to, to work together. We, we have to. Yes, we have this problem, but we are we are able to control it, and we are going to control it just to give this business community what it needs more. I mean, security and stability. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Yes. This will be the last remark. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. No, I, I wanted to say that uh, we reached a stage in Africa where almost you could count few problematic areas. I think what has influenced, particularly in the Northern Africa, has been the <clears throat> Arab Spring that affected the Arab countries in the North. <clears throat> but what has become an important factor? We have discussed this as leaders. You have countries that have volunteered to establish an instrument, the rapid response instrument, which we are working on, in, in, in two months' time, by October, we'll be launching it so that we have taken the principle of African problems <clears throat> and African solutions. We are now, on, on the basis of that, taken a decision that we're not going to allow any insecurity in the continent. We are taking this upon ourselves. I think that in itself is a, an important story that the world should know. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of everyone, uh, this audience, I appreciate your enthusiasm, uh, but I especially appreciate at the summit on Africa that we hear from Africans and African leaders, and, and you have given that to us, and I thank each of you, and uh, the President, I'm sure, will convey the same sense of appreciation when he comes, but thank you again, and thank each of you. As, 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 as a bigger continent, we must be given bigger time to explain ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good. And ladies and gentlemen, please remain in your seats for a short stage.